Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're going to be automating the first five generators required to make the rainbow generator. So, I hope you guys are ready. So today, I kind of want to get like the early basis or early starting point of uh, the rainbow generator. So we have one that is kind of automated. This will, this is just our current main power source. This guy is just insane at generating a significant amount of power, keeping everything powered and it has no issues right now. But later on down the road, we're gonna need a lot more power than what this thing is putting out. And we're gonna need to get all of these other generators automated. So yeah, um, when you look up generator, you're going to see there's tons of generators down here from extra utilities. All of these generators have to be automated in order for the rainbow generator to function properly. And they give a, a pretty good example here under power generation. Um, and I think we're going to go with this first and then we'll work through all of these. Uh, all of this is, is just auto crafting uh, at the most is <laughs> just kind of getting auto crafting set up. But these are a little bit different. Each one of these need their own specific type of automation. And I kind of put down a list today of everything that I'm going to need to get started with this. So first of all, let's go ahead and craft yourself a survivalist generator. It is the simplest thing to automate. I'm not joking. It is the simplest thing in the entire uh, part of the rainbow generator to automate. And it's probably one of the simplest to make as well. So this is literally the generator that we need to start with this guy. So yeah, let's go ahead and figure out how to automate him. So it's very simple on this one. All we're gonna need is a bonsai pot. I, I do believe, I think we can just get away with bonsai. And what we'll do is we'll put a void upgrade. Let's take a look, bonds, uh, what is it called? Bonsai pot, by the way, they changed the texture on the bonsai pots. I don't know if they upgraded anything else, but I know they changed the texture. And let's go ahead and make a hopper. There's a hopper. And all we gotta do is craft it like so. And we get a hopping bonsai. And I guess maybe it almost looks like we have to put the dirt in there. We, we may have to put dirt in there, I don't know. I have noticed that the dirt kind of changes depending on the uh, type of tree that is growing in there. But we're going to use just a simple oak tree. There's really no reason to use anything else but an oak tree. So with the oak sapling, it's going to give us sticks. And I want to just specifically have sticks going in there. So I'm going to get a drawer. Just a single drawer. And inside this drawer, I'm going to specify sticks. Just like this. And we'll set this. I mean, we can set it back one uh, because the bonsai actually needs a space completely above and it's probably going to need some sort of light source uh, the torch may have to go i don't know but we're going to set this like like so we're going to throw in a stick i'm going to have to get a, a lock or a key so let's go ahead and grab that drawer key very simple um, we should already have everything for this All right, and we can lock the drawer. So now that will always stay there. Now we are gonna need something else uh, to kind of pipe these items in, but we can go ahead and get our hopping bonsai going and see if this is gonna be high enough. I think it will be. Place the bonsai, place the tree inside. Okay, ah, they changed it. Now you're gonna need the soil. Okay, some soil in the pot first. Try green slimy grass. What? Try blue slimy dirt. Try gra- <laughs> All right, I guess it just tells you any random uh, random thing. We're gonna put grass in there, see how that goes. Will grass work? Yes, it will. And? Is a tree gonna grow? No, because it has that there. All right, so the torch cannot be there. It has to have a empty space in order for this tree to grow, but it should only produce sticks. It should not have like an internal buffer or anything. Um, so if I speed this up, 
we should have more sticks in here. Yeah. Awesome. So let's go down here. And we're going to have to set up a few things. And that is going to be, let's see, Ender, we need item conduits. That's going to be su super simple. Just take some uh, regular old item conduits, throw those down here. And we'll set this to extract, always active. And over here, insert. Um, I guess the top piece didn't connect properly. Oh, I unchecked extract when I wasn't supposed to. Uh, there we go. Now it should be set properly. And this technically should pull out of the drawer and pipe in here. There we go. As you can see, a stick's gone in there and you can tell this stick's going to last a long time. It lasts 50 seconds for this stick. We could put other things in here. We don't have to put a stick. We could put logs. We could put wood. Uh, that would just make it last a little bit longer. This is not that big a deal though. All right. So next thing is the furnace generator. I'm just going to set it here for right now because technically I'm going to use this to power the same thing. I'm going to have the same setup going for it. So let's just make another furnace gen just to have it here. So everything's in order. Let's see. Do I have everything? Yes. Furnace generator and let's place the planks here. There we go. We can take this uh, later on. And like I said, we'll put that roost on top of it and that will power this. As long as this gets coal, we should be good. Um, actually, we can probably just go ahead and put some coal in here. Uh, we have some coal blocks, so that will last quite a while. It'll just fill up the internal buffer, leaving this coal actually in here and everything should be good. Okay. So after we've done that, we have another one to go to, and that is the culinary generator. And this thing is a little bit different. Uh, let's take a look. Let's get, uh, let's get some of this as well in here. Some painted glowstone so we can get rid of these torches. That'll just make it look a little bit cleaner in here. So we don't have torches all over the place, which definitely don't look the greatest. There we go. Perfect. Now we can clean that up and that'll look a lot better. Even right here, we can throw a torch right in the center. Torch. <laughs> throw a painted log or whatever in the, in the middle. All right. Um, so culinary generator, that's going to be a little bit easier to do. Um, we have slime. And if we took a look at the culinary generator, we'll pull that up. Culinary generator. We, I think we have everything to make one. We need a furnace generator. So I'll take that to make a furnace, furnace generator. Then the culinary generator. Awesome. Culinary generator can do a few things. So it does work on slime. I was looking through the list of possible options for automation. That would be a little easy to do. And I come across slime. Look at this. Slime balls of the different colors uh, from Tinkers. Well, I'm pretty sure we have slime saplings. Uh, I know we have slime balls, but I'm almost positive we have slime saplings. Uh, they're upstairs somewhere. Also, I do need to go ahead and activate. I do have a teleportation wand. I need that because I'm, it'll be helpful going in and out of my uh, base. But I'm almost positive. Yeah, I have these slime saplings here. Um, I don't know if this will allow me to grow it on normal dirt, though. Uh, slimy dirt is something that normally you have to get from this mod. But let's see. Can I make slimy dirt? Or can will they grow on mud? Like slimy green dirt? Oh, we can make it. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Oh, man, that's, that's going to make it really easy. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that because we're going to need that soil. I'm going to use blue slimes, I guess, because that's what I have. Uh, don't I have blue slimes? I have purple slime. I guess we could just, we'll just use this to make just green slimy dirt. That doesn't really matter. Uh, and we'll also make another bonsai. So we'll just make another bonsai section here. I think we might have hoppers. No, we don't have hoppers. It'd really be nice if the Cyclic Magical uh, Beans Farm produced those. Those would be really cool. All right, so this is going to produce saplings, so we're going to have to do the same thing. We need a drawer setup. 
that's going to go on the wall. Uh, it's going to be the exact same way. So, drawer, we'll grab you, and we're going to say we only want blue slime to pro be produced in this. Now, I don't know how much control I'm going to have over that. Let's go ahead and just place it down real quick, and I'll place the dirt, and I'll place the blue slime in there, and let's use our acceleration wand to kind of speed this up a bit. Oh, wow. This gives you... Oh, this gives you the blocks. A green slime. Um, uh, maybe we need to change this pot. We might have to go with the orange. Because the orange one should give us orange slime. Or maybe it always gives you this slime. There we go. Maybe it always gives you that type. Uh, let's try it out. Let's try it out this way. Let's pull all that out. Put the slime in there. Put the bond, put the tree in there. Acceleration wand. There we go. That's what we want. Okay, so I'll take this. That's what we need. And we'll chop this back down. And I'll break this. Okay, so we'll, we should be able to put this in a better place for automation. Um, the same way we did the other side. There we go, let's pick this up, and we'll set the culinary generator right here. And we could pretty much automate simple power with the culinary generator. Much like we did our other setup. So right up here, we'll throw that. Uh, this does need like an empty block space above it. So just keep that in mind whenever you do place this. And then make sure you put the slime in there and lock it. Alright, and then we should be able to, we should be set for this. Like, literally, we should just put it in there, and hopefully this will stay running. I hope this produces enough to keep this running. I think the slime balls last a lot longer than any of the other food. Uh, almost like a minute and a half, it seems like. I think that's what I read. Like a minute and 20 seconds or something like that. Some pretty long number. Uh, and then let's go ahead and we'll just have this going in here. Like so. Place that down. And make sure you turn this on. And voila, that should be working. Uh, we can speed this up a bit. Put this, I think this is on, put this to fastest mode. And that should be producing some slime balls. Much like that. And the culinary generator is running. And it uh, looks like 50 seconds is what it's saying. That's fine. That will last a while. That should all last a while. Uh, look at all this is uh, actually capped out already. And that is that has pushed us quite a ways. So let's actually go ahead and claim some of these rewards now that we've gotten this far. Kind of just to show a little bit of our work that we've done. What else do we have completed? We have some of this that we never actually completed before. Uh, maybe we get some really good loot from these. Um, hopefully luck is on my side today. That would be awesome if it was. Uh, let's go ahead and see. Let's let's take a open open these. Oh, alchemical bags. This is an ultra rare reward. These bags are actually really nice because you can put these bags inside here, and now you have bags upon bags of storage. Really nice, actually. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of a few of these items. I'm gonna get rid of the alchemy bags uh, just to save some space. And there we go. And let's open this. Ah, flask. Another Batania flask. Um, some speed upgrades for mechanism. We'll definitely use those later on. Oh, awakened draconium. That is going to totally help in just a second. Perfect. Oh wow, that is probably the, the best thing that we've could we could have gotten in the chest for today's video. And then overclockers for industrial craft. Okay, perfect. So those are really good. Really good rewards, especially this one. And I'll show you why in just a second. Let's go ahead and we'll head upstairs. Actually, I, I literally made this teleportation wand for this. All right, can't we go through? Yeah, we can teleport through. Um, we're gonna take this for right now. Um, this has not really been used too much here by us anymore. So I'm gonna take this and we're gonna use it for our specific automation tasks. 
Um, teleportation will suffocate you here. What about here? Here? Oh, I guess it's too far down. That makes sense. Oh, well. Um, all right. So, automation for this. We're going to take a crucible. And we have... We, I think we can make fluid pipes. What does it take to make a fluid conduit? A pressurized fluid conduit? I don't think we have the stuff for that. We need fused quartz. But we can make a regular fluid conduit, I think. Quite clear glass. I think it just takes any glass, doesn't it? No, it takes a, spe a specific type of glass. Uh, that being... Oh, wow. That was actually perfect. Uh, we're going to need some glass. And I think three glass gets us this. And I, I think quartz... Quartz would be the best option. I think three pieces of quartz. If I was to turn this into alloys only. Let's throw this in here. Will that alloy up? That should give us fused quartz. Um, which is a specific type of uh, glass, hardened glass. Let's go ahead and speed this up. Should give it some power. There we go. These are both on double layer, and this is on a double layer. This actually needs to be on a higher output, because this is only outputting 80 RF per tick, whereas this is consuming 90, and this is consuming 90. So these actually need their own power source soon, which I'll set it up. I'll have that set up very soon. And there we go. We have fuse quartz. So I think that'll allow us to make the pressurized fluid conduits, right? Is this fuse quartz? I mean, it requires fuse quartz, so that means we should be able to make this. Perfect. And that's all we need. That's all we need from there. All right, I'll just let that go ahead and make some more fuse quartz. Um, unfortunately, actually, it probably won't generate our other stuff, but that's fine. I'm not too worried about it. I'll, I'll fix it later. All right, so now time to set the crucible up, and we're also going to need a cobblestone generator, right? So, we can probably power this with a very simple cobblestone generator. Cobblestone generator tier one. Uh, we're going to need a, two buckets. Two buckets. A bucket for water, a bucket for lava, of course. Super easy, though. Let's go ahead and grab our water. I think we have... Almost positive. Yes, that was a whole bucket. Okay, good. I was about to say, that was not going to be good if we didn't have a complete bucket there. And that should go here and here. Perfect. To upgrade this. Upgrade it again. I'd like to upgrade these things. Don't cost too much. There we go. We should have all of that. And last but not least, max tier. So, yeah, this used to be... Some of that was hard to get. I can't believe I threw stuff out of my inventory. Um, that used to be hard for us to get, but now it takes no time at all. We have, like, over 2,000 diamonds at this point. It's not even a thing. All right, so the automation for this. I'm going to put this all back behind this wall. And eventually we might actually use this lava gin um, for something else. Uh, we are going to need item transfer pipes again. Or item conduits. So you need item conduits, fluid conduits. Oh, and we also need a magmatic generator. But of course we'll get that in a second. So let's go ahead and just place this down. Right? Right here is going to be our furnace. So I'm going to put it right here. And right here is where everything is going to go. It's really nice to have awakened draconium though this close. Uh, but awakened draconium, if we take a look at this... Gives us 120. It's like the max you can generate in lava here. Like, I don't even think this cobblestone generator is going to be able to output fast enough. Like, I seriously don't think so. So, we'll set that to extract. Always active. Insert. Like, it's probably not going to keep up. Um, is that going to work, or do we have to do some sort of chest? No, that will work. Okay, so yeah, now it's starting to work. Um, like I said, this has already produced almost a full bucket. Um, and I think we're going to need... 
if I take a look at the magmatic generator, it's going to need a bucket of lava. Okay. Good to know. Let's get a bucket. We'll use its current automation to pull it out of here. And there we go. And yeah, we're getting started, guys. We're really early on of getting all the automation started, at least the early game automation uh, for all of these different uh, uh, different types of generators is being set up. So it'll make it a little easier on us down the road whenever we actually get like another star farm and stuff like that set up. Some easy things to set up like that. So there's that. And now all we have to do is hook up our new fluid pipe. That'll be insert. This will be extract, always active. And that should fill with lava, filling that with lava. And guys, that is done. So let's get some stone. And let's cover everything up, cover the mess that we've made, much like this. Um, I think we'll leave that open for now, because, <laughs> I mean, honestly, these are going to consistently run. This is probably going to be the only issue that we ha we'll have to fix later on. We might have to have more than one of these going at once, just to provide enough slime. C can this run off of normal slime? I don't think it can. Let's take a look. Let's actually try that. Slime. Or is it only Tinker Slime? Because I think Tinker Slime technically has a food consumption mechanic. Yeah, it definitely does. Okay, so yeah, that's a thing. It will only consume the Tinker's version, which works. And of course, this is going to generate quite a bit of power um, as it just kind of idles and has infinite lava. All right, so last but not least, let's take a look at this one. So this is the... Um, heated generator. Now this is going to require the same steps, uh, but this one's actually going to get uh, redstone. Uh, we're actually going to connect it to the same automation setup that we have going on right now with our other one. So let's go ahead and make another furnace gen. Looks like we were running out of these machine blocks. So of course we need another furnace. You know what? I'm just gonna make I'm gonna make a stack of furnaces, just to kind of hold us off while we make a bunch of these furnace generators. There we go. And one of those we're gonna need a bucket, right? Good old fashioned bucket. Can we pull a bucket out of there? No. Anyways, we're gonna have to come back here anyways. And, voila, another magmatic. We'll take this and a heated redstone generator. Okay, so the automation for this is going to be a little bit different. Let's route our pipe, by the way. We'll hook this into this one. That will give it redstone. Or that'll give it lava, sorry. Oh, and we're, uh, we probably need to just break this whole sis, uh, whole system. Yeah, I forgot about that. That can be a thing. You need a Yetter wrench to be able to fix that, and we don't have a Yetter wrench right now. So we'll set this to always again, have it extracting, have it inserting. There we go. Now they're both connected. This should be getting lava. But this also requires some redstone. Right? So how are we going to automate redstone? Well, a redstone chicken, probably. A redstone chicken is probably going to be one of our best options. And we're going to need a sand chicken and a red chicken. Now, a red chicken is pretty easy to get. We just need, yeah, a red dye around a chicken egg. Uh, which we, we can technically get. So, let's, let's try and do this. Red dye around some chicken eggs. You, uh, it's a 1 in 8 chance to get a chicken on spawn. I like to get a chicken out of this. And then a sand chicken. I think we can actually craft a sand chicken. Yes. An actual sand chicken spawn egg itself. Perfect. We'll take that. Turn him into item form. And he's good to go. Good to go there. Let's go ahead and warp up to our chicken area. And over here is our breeding room. 
And let's go ahead and get us a chicken. There we go. Oh, oh come back here. Ugh, placing torches. That's always fun. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and get these guys in here. Uh, we're also going to eat some seeds. And yeah, it's just a m matter of just waiting now. I mean, I can use this, my acceleration wand. That will definitely speed things up and help out a little bit. Um, but the main thing is getting at least a redstone chicken out of it. Uh, and then we're going to get two redstone chickens out of it, basically, to be able to upgrade it to a 10, 10, 10. And I'll be back once I get this thing going. You guys know the process. It literally is just going to take me some time. And that'll be it. There's another red chicken. So, yeah, we can pretty much throw that in there. It's going to help double the, uh, the output speed. So, I'll be right back and I'll get this done. So at this point, I have all of my chickens. Let me go ahead and just remove all of them but the 16. So there we go. And of course, this one down here. So that way we don't have much, <laughs> too many chickens crowding up our, our system. All right, so let's pop down here, back into our, our other area. Now, I'm eventually going to get a travel anchor down there. That will make life a lot easier. So I have to sit there and go all the way over here and travel back and forth. This is going to be the way that normal people will have to travel. But, you know, for me, being my own base, I should not have to travel that way. Um, so I'm going to fix that. But we'll take our roost now. And our roost is going to go here. We can get get our chicken in there. And our chickens are going to, from here, produce redstone. Awesome. Like, And it should produce, I think, 16 redstone apiece. Or it may be more than that. Is it more than that? No, it produces three. Okay, so three redstone, you know, out of, th out of 16 10 10 tens. I mean, that seems kind of okay, I guess. Uh, it doesn't take that long, I guess, to get that to work. But all we have to do to fully automate this, guys, is very simple. Just turn this on, insert, and that should start putting redstone in this slot. As soon as the Ender IO conduit updates and realizes that it does have a does have redstone it can pull out there it goes and this is going to start generating some power look at that this is actually not a bad generator to be honest for early game this is if you have a uh, lava automation it's actually better than the magmatic generators you do have to provide this with redstone give you know given that but this should be able to sustain this fully but guys we've gotten five different generators from extra utilities pretty much fully automated at this point um so if we have to do any modifications later on we will definitely be able to do so now this is going to have its power maxed out which means over time while we're doing other automation and things like that this drawer is going to fill with the slime balls so i think that whenever we need to actually get this thing up and running and to start the rainbow generator this thing will be up and ready to go and it shouldn't be too hard for this thing to stay continuously running. It will have a buffer. Same with this. This is going to have a buffer in it as well. And yeah, over time, it just won't take very long at all. I do. What, what is up with this? Why is it acting funny? Okay, so I there might be an issue. Is it because there's it needs more space? Oh, I think they've changed the way these work. Yes, they definitely did. They totally changed the way these work. So what I'm, what I think you're gonna have to probably do, I, I am gonna have to cut into this a little bit. We're gonna have to use this drawer, and I think we're gonna have to specify what we're actually dropping down in here now, because I feel like this is not doing what I want it to do. It, it basically this is getting clogged up now, and technically it does spill out more items. We have to give it the space for it to drop out. Oh, wow. This actually does the blocks itself. That might be a better choice anyways than everything else. I'm just curious. Why is this not actually completing? It does have the space to drop down into. Let's check these. They could be something weird going on. The hobby bonsai pots seem just kind of wonky. You know? Kind of weird. Actually, with this change, I wonder how much this actually affects the new version of Sky Factory 4. Or maybe this is a feature that was added specifically for Sky Factory 4. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. But I do know that this should technically work. 
The only thing I don't want going in here is apples. If apples go in here, I'm, I'm sure it won't, we won't have to worry about apples going in there. Um, but getting void upgrades on this will definitely work. Let's take a look at void. Uh, void. Void upgrades. So, yeah, we're definitely going to need these. So let's just make two of them. One for this drawer, one for that drawer. Perfect. So technically these should void whenever they get their max amount of items in there. And honestly, will, will this work in here? No, but this does convert into four slime balls. And that should pull out, and slime balls should be the only thing that should be able to go in here. Yes. Technically, this should only be able to pull out items that can go into here anyway. So we shouldn't have to even worry about that. So yeah, we should be good at this point. Everything's ready to go. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. And guys, if you haven't subscribed already, I highly recommend doing so. There's some awesome content that I do release on a daily basis. As of right now, about two videos a day. I know some days may not be two videos. There might be just one video, but um, it all depends on how busy I am in my real life. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. And as always, thanks for watching.